late, I've heard my friends and colleagues, family members, acknowledge a deep fatigue. And I've certainly felt it myself, seen evidence of that fatigue all around us. And it's caused me to ponder our complicated relationship to rest and how our, the way we rest is, um, is influenced by so many factors, both external and internal. For example, in an inequitable society, rest is often um, experienced as, as a privilege for some and not a basic human need for all. Um, if our work or our income is in any way uncertain, rest can feel like a luxury that we can't afford. If we're driven at all, as I can be by anxiety fueled, uh, anxiety fueled by comparisons or harsh self-judgment, even when the opportunity for rest um, affords itself, we may not take it. And, um, and certainly in a time when all of our normal rhythms of work and life balance have been disrupted, we may have forgotten even what rest feels like. Um, and then, then, of course, there is the clarion call these days, uh, the clarion call in all of our years for justice. Uh, I've posted a sign on my door just as a reminder, a self-exhortation with the words from the great civil rights activist from the 1960s, Ella Baker. And that reads, uh, until, the until the killing of black men, black mothers' sons becomes as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son, we who believe in freedom cannot rest. We cannot rest on the long road to justice or on the long road to anything of lasting value. We cannot rest. And yet at the same time, we need rest. Our bodies need rest daily or we get sick. Our minds need rest or we lose the ability to think clearly. Our souls need rest or they lose their grounding and uh, perspective. And without adequate rest, we are at greater risk for having accidents, for making poor decisions, for causing for causing undue harm, even in our efforts um, to do good. It's complicated. So as I bring all of these uh, thoughts and concerns and realities to prayer, this is what I hear. I hear Jesus, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take, your, take my yoke upon you and learn from me because my burden is easy and my yoke is light. I hear uh, God's commandment uh, that all human beings have adequate rest. So this we know that God knows our need for rest, that God wants us to live in a world where all can rest, all can have daily rest, and in longer rhythms of a Sabbath day each week, and also in the extended seasons of life that there be times when we allow ourselves, like the soil, to lie fallow in order to continue to bear fruit over over the course of our lives. We, we know this. Um, yet there are seasons of life when rest is imposed upon us and it doesn't feel like a gift. It feels like a, a burden. There are other seasons in life and in society when rest is impossible because there's just so much important work to do. And then we have to rely on our inner reserves, our uh, the support of other people, the grace of God to see us through. And God does, as Paul writes so beautifully, there are times when God working in us can accomplish infinitely more than we can ask for or imagine because of that grace, that energy working in us. Um, but here's the thing, we, we aren't meant to work like that, at that pace all the time. But once we become accustomed to it, uh, it gets a little addicting and it takes time to recalibrate 
and to regain a more sustainable rhythm. So um, remember that, that Jesus was not one to shirk from work, and yet he calls us, his followers, not only into lives of sacrificial love and service, but also to times of rest, that he longs to give us rest for our weary souls. So in this unsettled, stressful, unrestful time, I hope that you find a way to practice rest. It's one of the foundational disciplines in Jesus's way of love, but practice, I remind myself, um, practice means I'm not always good at it. So I have to practice resting and it helps. It helps me. I hope it helps you to remember that this was one of God's commandments. It wasn't a suggestion. It was a commandment that we rest for our sake and for the sake of others. Um, you might think about all the factors influencing your capacity to rest right now and to bring that to prayer. But one more thing, um, in your time of rest, when you, when you dare to take it and you uh, savor it or when you acknowledge your need for it, um, try not to, if you're like me, um, in, a, in a job of, of, of some privilege, try not to whine about your need for rest or to boast to um, gleefully about the times you take it. And the reason is this, there's, there's always somebody listening who's um, still working and still working really hard and perhaps too hard for too long. And remember that as we rest, others are, others are still working and they're working hard. Um, and if you can, whenever you can, find ways to offer the gift of rest to someone else. In a time like this, especially, the gift of rest given, it's priceless. It's priceless both to, to give and to receive. I wish you rest and I wish you the joy of giving rest to someone else. <laughs>